Okay, now we're going into the example problem section of the lecture. So we're looking at problem 11 of chapter 4. There's a 20 kilogram box at rest on the table, and we want to know the weight of the box and the normal force acting on it. So first, and then a 10 kilogram box is placed on top of the 20 kilogram box as shown in the figure. And we determine the normal force that the table exerts on the 20 kilogram box and then the normal force that the 20 kilogram box exerts on the 10 kilogram box. So the first thing to do for a problem involving forces and Newton's laws is free body diagrams. So for part A, we start with a free body diagram of just the 20 kilogram box. We have not yet added um, the, the 10 kilograms on top. So <clears throat> the 20 kilogram box ignoring that pink 10 kilogram box has pull of gravity down on it, a normal force of the table up on it. Um, and friction or not, it's not moving. Uh, and it's, we're assuming it's a horizontal table. So there are no other things touching it. And um, there's no other forces needed because it's not accelerating. You don't have to consider any other forces. So what's the weight of the box and the normal force acting on it? Because it's at rest, I'm going to decide that these two forces must be equal. Because acceleration equals zero. So F net must be equal zero. Right. If there's zero acceleration, we must conclude that the net force is also zero. So I remember that pull of gravity, at least in the flat Earth approximation, is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So for 20 kilograms. <coughs> Excuse me. I can show you my calculator, too. Not that there's much exciting about this calculator. Oops. Let's see, I'm going to delete that one. Okay, so 196. And our units should be newtons or and or kilogram times meter per second squared, remembering that those are interchangeable. Okay, and so I've solved the pull of gravity on the 20 kilogram box, but that pull of gravity is also answering the question about what's the normal force. Okay, so for part B, we have a more complicated problem where we have two objects, Ooh, excuse the extreme refocusing. Um, so we have two objects and we need two free body diagrams. So I might label them the 20 kg and the 10 kg. Um, so the 20 kilogram block has its pull of gravity, I might as well sort of try to scale that to be the same as the last one, FG. I'm going to call it FG20 just to um, indicate that it's the pull of gravity on the 20 kilogram block now that we have two blocks. And then it's touching the 10 kilogram block. So the 10 kilogram block is pushing down on it. And that is a normal force. It's not as we normally think of a normal force. But the 10 kilogram block has pull of gravity. And if it's at rest, I might as well just sort of start drawing its diagram. If it's at rest, the pull of gravity on it, Fg, which I'm calling Fg10, to indicate that it's the pull of gravity just on the 10 kilogram block. If it's if this block is at rest, this force must have something counterbalancing it, and that would be the support force of the top of the 20 kilogram box pushing up on it. So I'm going to call this Fn10. Hmm. No, that doesn't quite work. Well, whatever. Yeah, that'll work. This is the normal force on the 10 kilogram block due to the surface of the 20 kilogram box supporting it. So this force, this normal force of the 20 kilogram block supporting the 10 kilogram block is the same as the force of the 10 kilogram block pushing on the 20 kilogram block. It's a normal force but it's also an action-reaction force. Um, 
We've only briefly discussed Newton's third law, but for every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. If the 20 kilogram block box, block, whatever, is supporting the 10 kilogram block, if the 20 kilogram block is pushing up on the 10 kilogram block, then the 10 kilogram block must also be pushing down on the 20 kilogram block. So here's our first real example of an action and reaction uh, pair. And I've kind of highlighted that with pink. So then I'm looking now again, well, let's check. Is anything else touching the 10 kilogram block? I see nothing else touching it. There's the 20 kilogram block in contact with it. That's represented here. And then there's the pull of gravity, the field force pulling down on it. Nothing else is touching it. So we're done. So now I go back to the 20 kilogram block. I see that we have the pull of gravity on the 20 kilogram block, same as before, as in part A. We now have this push of the 10 kilogram block on the 20 kilogram block. And there's nothing else touching it except the table. So I must conclude that the normal force of the table on the 20 kilogram block has increased because the 20 kilogram block is still at rest. And now that normal force has to counterbalance both the weight of the 20 kilogram block and that push of the 10 kilogram block on the 20 kilogram block. So this isn't exactly to scale because I would have been crossing out 20 kilograms. If I was really being accurate, and since I'm using graph paper, I would need to make this upward force like six and a half um, squares long, but I ran out of room. So I'm gonna label this F sub n 20. I could also label it F sub n table, but that's okay. So the question again asks us, what's the normal force that the table exerts? Determine the normal force that the table exerts on the 20 kilogram block and the normal force that the 20 kilogram block exerts on the 10 kilogram block. So we want to know both of these normal forces. So I'm kind of at a loss to start with 20 kilograms because I have another unknown here. So I move over to the 10 kilogram block and again I conclude that acceleration is equal to zero. It is at rest. That was told to us in the problem. So F net is equal to zero, which is to say that the pull of gravity on 10 is equal to the support force or the normal force of the 20 pushing up on the 10. And so that's equal to 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And even I can do that in my head, 980 newtons. Okay, so now <clears throat> we know what this pink force is, action, reaction, same, um, same magnitude, opposite direction. Put that over here. <clears throat> and again, I say, Acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared, which tells us the net force is equal to zero newtons. So the normal force of the table on the 20 kilogram block has to be equal to the sum of the normal force of the 10 kilogram block pushing down on the 20 kilogram block plus the pull of gravity on the 20 kilogram block. So I know the normal force of the 10 on the 20 is 980. And from part A, I know that the pull of gravity on the 20 is 196. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Oh dear. Oh, this is not 980, it's 98. Ha, that's funny. I said I could do that without a calculator and I didn't even. <laughs> 98 Newtons is the pull of gravity on the 10 kilogram block. You guys, it's Friday afternoon when I'm making this recording, so be nice to me. So 98 Newtons is the <laughs> normal force of the 10 kilogram block pushing down on the 20. 196 is the pull of gravity on the 20. So I better, I better not get cocky and um, not use my calculator. 98 plus 196 is 294 Newtons. So we're thinking about normal force, we're thinking about support force, but we're also thinking about Newton's third law.